Did you know the 70s were a standout decade for Hollywood? It wasn't just the groundbreaking films and unique fashion that made this era iconic. The 70s were also known for their stars who captivated audiences. The women of this time, with their stunning beauty and undeniable appeal, became the dream of every man. Join us as we take a look at these women from the 70s all the way till now. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda is a name synonymous with versatility and resilience. Born on December 21, 1937, in New York City, she is the daughter of legendary actor Henry Fonda. Jane Fonda carved her own path in the entertainment industry, becoming one of the most influential it girls of the 1970s. Fonda's career began in the early 1960s with stage performances and minor film roles. However, it was her role in the 1968 science fiction film Barbarella that cemented her status as a sex symbol and a major Hollywood star. The film's campy, futuristic aesthetic, combined with Fonda's daring performance, made her an icon of 1960s and 1970s pop culture. In the 1970s, Fonda showcased her extraordinary range as an actress. She won her first Academy Award for Best Actress for her role in Clute, 1971, where she played a call girl who becomes entangled in a murder investigation. This role demonstrated her ability to tackle complex characters and solidified her reputation as a serious actress. She won her second Oscar for Coming Home, 1978, a film that dealt with the emotional impact of the Vietnam War on veterans and their families. Beyond her acting career, Jane Fonda became an outspoken political activist during the 1970s. She was particularly vocal about her opposition to the Vietnam War, a stance that earned her both admiration and criticism. Her visit to North Vietnam in 1972, where she was photographed sitting on an anti-aircraft gun, sparked significant controversy and led to the nickname Hanoi Jane. Despite the backlash, Fonda remained committed to her activism, advocating for civil rights, women's rights, and environmental issues. In the 1980s, Fonda reinvented herself once again, this time as a fitness guru. Her workout videos, starting with Jane Fonda's Workout, 1982, became a cultural phenomenon and helped popularize home exercise routines. These videos were immensely successful and contributed to the fitness craze of the decade. Today, Jane Fonda continues to be a force in both the entertainment industry and activism. She starred in the hit Netflix series Grace and Frankie, which premiered in 2015 and ran for seven seasons. The show, co-starring Lily Tomlin, explored the lives of two older women who form an unlikely friendship after their husbands leave them for each other. Fonda's performance was widely praised, and the show garnered a dedicated fan base. In addition to her acting, Fonda remains deeply involved in activism. She has been a vocal advocate for climate change awareness, participating in protests and rallies to demand action from political leaders. Her commitment to social and environmental causes has not waned with age, and she continues to inspire new generations of activists. Liza Minnelli. Liza Minnelli, born on March 12, 1946, is an American actress and singer renowned for her powerful stage presence and exceptional talent. Daughter of legendary actress Judy Garland and film director Vincente Minnelli, Liza was destined for stardom from a young age. She is best known for her work in musical theater, film, and her distinctive singing voice. Minnelli's career took off in the 1960s, but it was the 1970s that truly cemented her status as an E.T. girl. She became a household name with her role as Sally Bowles in the 1972 film Cabaret, a performance that earned her an Academy Award for Best Actress. Her portrayal of the carefree yet vulnerable cabaret singer showcased her incredible range as an actress and singer, making her an icon of the era. In addition to her work in cabaret, Minnelli's career in the 70s included notable performances in films like The Sterile Cuckoo, 1969, for which she received her first Oscar nomination, 
and New York, New York, 1977, where she starred alongside Robert De Niro. Her collaboration with director Bob Fosse in Cabaret and other projects highlighted her ability to blend acting, singing, and dancing seamlessly, a rare trifecta in the entertainment industry. Minnelli's success wasn't limited to the screen. She was also a celebrated stage performer, winning Tony Awards for her performances in Flora the Red Menace, 1965, and The Act, 1977. Her concerts were legendary, with her live performances drawing massive audiences and critical acclaim. Her ability to connect with her audience through her emotive singing and charismatic presence made her a beloved figure in both theater and concert venues. Beyond her professional achievements, Minnelli became a fashion icon known for her distinctive style, including her signature short hair and glamorous outfits. She was a regular fixture in the social scene, often seen at Studio 54, the epicenter of 70s nightlife alongside other celebrities. Minnelli's influence can be seen in the many performers who cite her as an inspiration, and her work continues to be celebrated by new generations of fans. Cher, Cher born Sherilyn Sarkeesian on May 20, 1946, in El Centro, California, is an iconic figure who transcended music, film, and television. Often referred to as the goddess of pop, she epitomized the free-spirited, independent woman of the 1970s. Her journey to stardom began in the mid-1960s when she formed the duo Sonny and Cher with her then-husband, Sonny Bono. Their hit song, I Got You Babe, catapulted them to fame, establishing them as one of the most beloved musical acts of the era. Cher's distinctive contralto voice and captivating stage presence quickly established her as a star. Her solo career took off with hits like Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down, and Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves. These songs showcased her versatility and ability to connect with audiences on a deeply emotional level. Cher's ability to reinvent herself was unparalleled. She seamlessly transitioned from pop music to acting, starring in films like Silkwood and Mask, which earned her critical acclaim. In 1987, Cher's acting career reached new heights with her role in Moonstruck, for which she won an Academy Award for Best Actress. Her portrayal of Loretta Castorini, a widowed bookkeeper who falls in love with her fiancé's brother, showcased her comedic timing and dramatic depth. This achievement solidified her status as a multi-talented performer capable of excelling in various entertainment mediums. Beyond her talent, Cher became a cultural icon known for her bold fashion choices and outspoken personality. She challenged societal norms with her daring outfits, often designed by Bob Mackey, and her unapologetic attitude. Cher's television variety shows, The Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour and Cher, further cemented her status as a trailblazer in the entertainment industry. Her influence extended beyond music and film as she became a symbol of female empowerment and individuality. Cher's impact on pop culture is undeniable. She has sold over 100 million records worldwide, making her one of the best-selling music artists of all time. Her ability to adapt to changing musical trends from folk rock to disco to dance pop has kept her relevant throughout the decades. In 1998, she achieved a career milestone with the release of Believe, a dance pop anthem that introduced auto-tune to the mainstream and top charts globally. Cher's ability to continuously reinvent herself while staying true to her unique persona has inspired countless artists and fans alike. Pam Greer. Pam Greer is an iconic figure who epitomized the it girl status of the 1970s, particularly within the realm of black exploitation films. Born on May 26, 1949, in Winston Salem, North Carolina, Greer's career took off in the early 1970s, making her one of the first African-American actresses to headline action films. She became a symbol of empowerment and strength, breaking barriers in a predominantly male-dominated industry. Greer's breakthrough role came with the 1973 film Coffee, where she played a nurse 
who becomes a vigilante to avenge her sister's death. This role catapulted her to stardom and established her as a leading lady in black exploitation cinema. She followed this success with another iconic role in Foxy Brown, 1974, where she played a woman seeking revenge against a drug syndicate. These roles not only showcased her acting prowess, but also her ability to perform physically demanding stunts, making her a trailblazer for future generations of actresses. Throughout the 1970s, Greer starred in a series of successful films, including Sheba Baby, 1975, and Friday Foster, 1975, solidifying her status as a cultural icon. Her characters were often strong, independent women who fought against corruption and injustice, resonating with audiences and inspiring many. Greer's career experienced a resurgence in the 1990s when director Quentin Tarantino cast her in the lead role of Jackie Brown, 1997. This role earned her critical acclaim and several award nominations, including a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress. The film reintroduced her to a new generation of fans and reaffirmed her status as a versatile and talented actress. In addition to her film career, Greer has appeared in numerous television shows, including The L Word, where she played Kit Porter, and Smallville, where she portrayed Amanda Waller. Her performances have consistently garnered praise, showcasing her range as an actress. Pam Greer continues to be active in the entertainment industry. She has authored an autobiography, Foxy, My Life in Three Acts, which details her life and career, providing an intimate look at her journey. Greer is also an advocate for various causes, including cancer awareness, having battled and overcome cancer herself. Jane Birkin. Jane Birkin, born on December 14, 1946, in London, England, is a British-French actress, singer, and fashion icon. She rose to fame during the 1960s and 1970s and became a symbol of the era's free-spirited and bohemian lifestyle. Birkin's charm, effortless style, and unique voice set her apart, making her a beloved figure in both the fashion and entertainment industries. Birkin's career began in the early 1960s with small roles in British films, but her breakthrough came when she moved to France and starred in the controversial film Blow Up, 1966, directed by Michelangelo Antonioni. Her performance caught the attention of French audiences and filmmakers, leading to more significant roles in French cinema. However, it was her collaboration with French singer-songwriter Serge Gainsbourg that truly catapulted her to international stardom. In 1969, Birkin and Gainsbourg released the duet Ye Tame Moi Non Plus, which became an instant hit despite, or perhaps because of, its provocative and sensual nature. The song's success solidified their status as one of the most iconic and scandalous couples of the time. Birkin and Gainsbourg continued to collaborate on various musical projects, with Birkin releasing several successful albums that showcased her distinctive voice and Gainsbourg's innovative compositions. Beyond her music career, Birkin also made a significant impact in the world of fashion. Her effortless, chic style, characterized by simple yet elegant clothing, became a hallmark of 1970s fashion. She popularized the boho chic look, often seen wearing flared jeans, loose blouses, and her signature accessory, a wicker basket that she carried everywhere. This basket eventually inspired the creation of the iconic Hermes Birkin bag, named in her honor, which remains one of the most coveted luxury handbags to this day. Throughout the 1970s and beyond, Birkin continued to act in numerous French films, working with renowned directors such as Agnes Varda and Jacques Doyon. Her performances were praised for their authenticity and emotional depth, further cementing her status as a versatile and talented actress. Despite facing personal challenges, including health issues and the loss of her daughter, Kate Berry, Birkin's resilience and enduring talent have kept her in the public eye. Jane Birkin is celebrated not only for her contributions to music, film, and fashion, but also for her humanitarian efforts. 
she has been involved in various charitable causes, advocating for human rights and environmental issues. Bianca Jagger Bianca Jagger, born Bianca Perez Mora. Matias, on May 2, 1945, in Managua, Nicaragua, is a renowned social and human rights advocate, actress, and former fashion icon. She rose to prominence in the 70s as one of the most celebrated E.T. girls of the decade, known for her striking beauty, impeccable style, and high-profile marriage to Rolling Stones frontman Mick Jagger. Bianca's early life was marked by her academic pursuits. She attended the prestigious Institut d'études politiques in Paris on a scholarship, where she studied political science. However, her life took a dramatic turn when she met Mick Jagger at a party after a Rolling Stones concert in September 1970. The couple married on May 12, 1971, in a lavish ceremony in Saint-Tropez, France. Their marriage and Bianca's association with the Rolling Stones catapulted her into the limelight, making her a fixture in the international social scene. Bianca Jagger quickly became a fashion icon known for her glamorous and avant-garde style. She was a regular at Studio 54, the legendary New York nightclub, and her appearances there are the stuff of legend. One of the most iconic images of the era is Bianca riding into Studio 54 on a white horse on her 30th birthday. An event that epitomized the excess and glamour of the 70s. In addition to her socialite status, Bianca pursued a career in acting. She appeared in several films during the 1970s and 1980s, including The Cannonball Run, 1981, and Flesh Color, 1978. However, it was her work as a human rights advocate that truly defined her legacy. After her separation from Mick Jagger in 1978 and their subsequent divorce in 1980, Bianca shifted her focus to humanitarian efforts. Bianca Jagger has been a prominent voice in the fight for social justice and human rights. She founded the Bianca Jagger Human Rights Foundation in 2006, which works to promote human rights, social justice, and environmental protection. She has been involved in numerous campaigns, including efforts to end violence against women, combat climate change, and advocate for the rights of indigenous peoples. She has received numerous awards and honors for her work, including the Right Livelihood Award, often referred to as the Alternative Nobel Prize, in 2004. Farrah Fawcett Farrah Fawcett, born on February 2, 1947, in Corpus Christi, Texas, was an iconic American actress and model who became a cultural phenomenon in the 1970s. She is best known for her role as Jill Monroe in the hit television series Charlie's Angels, which catapulted her to international stardom and cemented her status as one of the decade's quintessential IT girls. Farrah's journey to fame began with her striking looks and charismatic presence. She moved to Los Angeles in the late 1960s, where she started her career in television commercials and guest roles on popular TV shows. Her big break came in 1976 when she was cast in Charlie's Angels, a show about three female private detectives working for a mysterious boss named Charlie. Farrah's portrayal of the athletic and adventurous Jill Monroe, coupled with her iconic feathered hairstyle, made her an instant sensation. During her time on Charlie's Angels, Farrah became a household name and a fashion icon. Her poster, featuring her in a red swimsuit with a dazzling smile, sold millions of copies and is considered one of the best-selling posters of all time. Despite her immense popularity, Farrah left Charlie's Angels after just one season to pursue a film career. Her departure was a significant risk, but it showcased her determination to take on new challenges. Farrah's film career had its ups and downs with notable performances in movies like Logan's Run, 1976, and The Cannonball Run, 1981. However, it was her role in the 1984 television movie The Burning Bed that earned her critical acclaim. In this powerful drama, Farrah portrayed a battered wife who takes drastic measures to escape her abusive husband. 
The performance earned her an Emmy nomination and demonstrated her range as an actress. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Farah continued to work in both television and film, taking on a variety of roles that showcased her versatility. She received further acclaim for her performances in Extremities, 1986, and Small Sacrifices, 1989, the latter earning her another Emmy nomination. Farah's personal life was often in the spotlight, particularly her relationships with actor Lee Majors and later with actor Ryan O'Neill. Her relationship with O'Neill was tumultuous but enduring, and they had a son together, Redmond O'Neill. In the 2000s, Farah faced a significant health challenge when she was diagnosed with anal cancer. She bravely documented her battle with the disease in the 2009 documentary, Farah's Story, which provided an intimate look at her struggle and resilience. Sadly, Farah Fawcett passed away on June 25, 2009, at the age of 62. Goldie Hawn Goldie Hawn, born on November 21, 1945, in Washington, D.C., is an American actress, producer, and singer who became a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Known for her effervescent personality, comedic talent, and iconic blonde locks, Goldie quickly rose to fame in the late 1960s and 1970s. Goldie's big break came with her role as a regular cast member on the sketch comedy show Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, 1968 to 1973. Her bubbly demeanor and comedic timing made her a standout on the show, earning her widespread recognition and a devoted fan base. It was during this time that Goldie solidified her reputation as a comedic genius, with her infectious laugh and quirky antics becoming her trademarks. In 1969, Goldie won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in the film Cactus Flower, where she starred alongside Walter Matthau and Ingrid Bergman. This accolade catapulted her into the realm of Hollywood's elite, and she continued to build a successful film career throughout the 1970s and beyond. Goldie starred in a string of hit movies during the 1970s and 1980s, including there's a Girl in My Soup, 1970, Butterflies Are Free, 1972, The Sugarland Express, 1974, and Shampoo, 1975. Her roles often showcased her comedic prowess, but she also demonstrated her versatility by taking on more dramatic parts. One of her most memorable performances came in the 1980 film Private Benjamin, where she played a spoiled socialite who joins the army. This role earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. In addition to her acting career, Goldie ventured into producing, founding her own production company, Cosmic Entertainment, in 1990. She produced several successful films, including The First Wives Club, 1996, and Something to Talk About, 1995, further cementing her influence in Hollywood. Goldie's personal life has also been a subject of public interest. She has been in a long-term relationship with actor Kurt Russell since 1983, and the couple has one son together, Wyatt Russell. Goldie also has two children from her previous marriage to musician Bill Hudson, actress Kate Hudson, and actor Oliver Hudson. In recent years, Goldie has focused on her philanthropic efforts, particularly through the Hahn Foundation, which she founded in 2003. Asi. The foundation aims to improve children's academic performance and emotional well-being through mindfulness-based education programs. Lauren Hutton. Lauren Hutton, born on November 17, 1943, in Charleston, South Carolina, is an American model and actress who became a trailblazer in the fashion and entertainment industries. Known for her distinctive gap-toothed smile and natural beauty, Lauren broke numerous barriers and set new standards for models and actresses in her era. Lauren's journey to stardom began in the 1960s when she moved to New York City to pursue a career in modeling. Her unique look quickly caught the attention of major fashion photographers and designers. In 1968, she signed a groundbreaking contract with Revlon, becoming the first model to secure an exclusive cosmetics deal. 
This contract, worth $250,000 per year, was a significant milestone in the modeling industry, elevating Lauren's status to that of a supermodel. Throughout the 1970s, Lauren graced the covers of countless magazines, including Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and Cosmopolitan. Her fresh-faced beauty and effortless style made her a favorite among designers and photographers. She became a muse for legendary fashion photographer Richard Avedon, who captured some of her most iconic images. In addition to her modeling career, Lauren ventured into acting. Her performance in the 1974 film The Gambler, opposite James Caan, garnered critical acclaim and established her as a talented actress. Lauren continued to build her acting career with roles in films such as American Gigolo, 1980, where she starred alongside Richard Gere and Lassiter, 1984, with Tom Selleck. In the 1990s, Lauren made a triumphant return to modeling, signing another lucrative contract with Revlon at the age of 46. This move challenged the industry's ageist standards and proved that beauty and talent are timeless. She continued to work with major brands and appeared in campaigns for companies like J. Crew and H. and Embo Diana Ross. Diana Ross, born on March 26, 1944, in Detroit, Michigan, is an American singer, actress, and record producer who rose to fame as the lead singer of The Supremes, one of the world's best-selling girl groups of all time. Known for her powerful voice, glamorous style, and magnetic stage presence, Diana became a cultural icon and a trailblazer in the music and entertainment industries. Diana's journey to stardom began in the early 1960s when she joined the Supremes, a Motown girl group originally called the Primettes. Alongside Mary Wilson and Florence Ballard, Diana led the group to unprecedented success. With hits like Where Did Our Love Go, Baby Love, and Stop in the Name of Love. The Supremes became the first American group to have five consecutive number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100. In 1970, Diana embarked on a solo career that would further cement her status as a music legend. Her debut solo album, Diana Ross, featured the hit single, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, which became her first number one solo hit and earned her a Grammy nomination. Throughout the 1970s, Diana released a series of successful albums, including Touch Me in the Morning, 1973, Diana Ross, 1976, and The Boss, 1979. Her music spanned a variety of genres, from soul and R&B to disco and pop, showcasing her versatility as an artist. Diana's talents extended beyond music. She made her film debut in 1972 with the critically acclaimed biographical film Lady Sings the Blues, in which she portrayed jazz singer Billie Holiday. Her performance earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. She continued to act in films such as Mahogany, 1975, and The Wiz, 1978, further establishing herself as a multi-talented entertainer. Throughout her career, Diana Ross has received numerous awards and accolades, including a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, a Kennedy Center Honor, and a Presidential Medal of Freedom. Jacqueline Bisset, Jacqueline Bissett, born on September 13, 1944, in Weybridge, Surrey, England, is a renowned British actress known for her beauty, talent, and versatility on screen. She began her acting career in the mid-1960s and quickly became one of the most sought-after actresses of her time. Bisset's breakthrough came with her role in the 1968 film The Detective, where she starred alongside Frank Sinatra. However, it was her performance in the 1968 film Bullet, opposite Steve McQueen, that truly catapulted her to stardom. Her portrayal of Kathy, the girlfriend of McQueen's character, showcased her ability to hold her own alongside major Hollywood stars. Throughout the 1970s, Jacqueline Bisset continued to build an impressive filmography, starring in a variety of genres. She gained critical acclaim for her roles in films such as Airport, 1970, 
The Mephisto Waltz, 1971, and Day for Night, 1973, directed by Francois Truffaut. Day for Night won the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and Bisset's performance was praised for its depth and authenticity. One of her most memorable roles came in the 1977 film The Deep, where she played Gail Burke. The film was a commercial success, and Bisset's underwater scenes in a white t-shirt became iconic, further cementing her status as a sex symbol of the era. Despite being known for her beauty, Bisset consistently chose roles that showcased her acting prowess and depth. In addition to her success in Hollywood, Jacqueline Bisset worked with European directors, which allowed her to demonstrate her range as an actress. Her performance in the 1978 film, Who is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe, earned her a Golden Globe nomination, highlighting her ability to excel in both dramatic and comedic roles. Jacqueline Bisset received a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress in a Series, Miniseries, or Television Film. For her role in the 2013 miniseries Dancing on the Edge, Jacqueline Bisset still remains active in the industry, taking on roles that challenge and inspire her. Twiggy Twiggy, born Leslie Hornby on September 19, 1949, in London, England, is a British cultural icon who revolutionized the fashion industry with her unique look and style. She became the face of the 1960s and 1970s, embodying the youthful androgynous look that defined the era. Twiggy's rise to fame began at the tender age of 16 when she was discovered by Nigel Davies, a hairstylist who later became her manager and boyfriend. With her short hair, doe eyes, and slim figure, she quickly became the face of the mod movement. Twiggy's distinctive look, characterized by her large expressive eyes accentuated with heavy mascara and her pixie haircut, set her apart from the curvaceous models of the previous decade. In 1966, Twiggy's career skyrocketed when she was named the face of 1,966 inches by the Daily Express. Her image graced the covers of major fashion magazines such as Vogue and Elle, and she became the muse for many top designers, including Mary Quant, who is credited with popularizing the miniskirt. Despite her initial success as a model, Twiggy decided to transition into acting and singing in the early 1970s. She made her film debut in Ken Russell's The Boyfriend, 1971, for which she won two Golden Globe Awards. Her performance showcased her versatility and talent beyond modeling, proving that she was more than just a pretty face. Twiggy's career continued to evolve as she took on various roles in film, television, and theater. She appeared in several successful productions, including the Broadway musical My One and Only for which she received a Tony Award nomination. Twiggy also became a prominent advocate for animal rights and environmental causes. Diahan Carroll. Diahan Carroll, born Carol Diane Johnson. On July 17, 1935, in the Bronx, New York City, was a trailblazing actress, singer, and model. She broke numerous barriers in the entertainment industry, becoming one of the first African-American women to stir in her own television series and earning critical acclaim for her work on stage and screen. Carol's career began in the 1950s when she won a talent contest on the television show Chance of a Lifetime. This victory led to appearances on various TV shows and in nightclubs, where her remarkable singing talent quickly garnered attention. She made her Broadway debut in the musical House of Flowers in 1954, which was written by Truman Capote and Harold Arlen. In 1962, Carol's career reached new heights when she starred in the Broadway musical No Strings, for which she won a Tony Award for Best Actress. This achievement made her the first African-American woman to win in this category, cementing her status as a pioneering figure in the entertainment industry. However, it was her role in the groundbreaking television series Julia, 1968 to 1971, that truly solidified her place in history. 
Carol starred as Julia Baker, a widowed nurse raising her young son. Julia was one of the first TV shows to depict an African-American woman in a professional role, and Carol's portrayal challenged stereotypes and opened doors for future generations of actors. Her performance earned her a Golden Globe Award and an Emmy nomination, further highlighting her talent and impact. Throughout the 1970s and beyond, Carol continued to make significant contributions to film and television. She appeared in movies such as Claudine, 1974, for which she received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. Her versatility as an actress was evident in her ability to tackle a wide range of roles, from drama to comedy. Diahan Carroll's career continued to flourish in the following decades with notable roles in television series such as Dynasty and A Different World. She remained a beloved figure in the entertainment industry until her passing on October 4, 2019. Jacqueline Smith Jacqueline Smith, born on October 26, 1945, in Houston, Texas, is an American actress and businesswoman best known for her role as Kelly Garrett in the iconic television series Charlie's Angels. Her portrayal of Kelly Garrett made her a household name and a symbol of beauty and strength during the 1970s. Smith's journey to stardom began with her work in commercials and small television roles. She initially moved to New York City to pursue a career in ballet, but her path soon shifted to modeling and acting. Her big break came in 1976 when she was cast as one of the original Angels on the hit TV show Charlie's Angels, created by Aaron Spelling. Jacqueline Smith's role as Kelly Garrett was central to the show's appeal. Her character was known for her intelligence, resourcefulness, and elegance, qualities that Smith embodied both on and off screen. Unlike her co-stars, Smith remained with the show for its entire five-season run, from 1976 to 1981, solidifying her status as a beloved television icon. Beyond Charlie's Angels, Smith's acting career continued to flourish. She starred in numerous television movies and miniseries, including Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, 1981, where she portrayed the former First Lady and Rage of Angels, 1983, based on the novel by Sidney Sheldon. Her performances garnered critical acclaim and demonstrated her versatility as an actress. In addition to her acting career, Jacqueline Smith became a successful businesswoman. In 1985, she launched her own line of women's apparel for Kmart, making her one of the first celebrities to create a signature clothing line. Her business skills and keen sense of style helped her brand thrive, and she expanded her empire to include home furnishings and skin care products. Smith's entrepreneurial ventures have been highly successful, and she remains actively involved in her business endeavors. Grace Jones Grace Beverly Jones, born on May 19, 1948, in Spanish Town, Jamaica, is a multifaceted artist known for her work as a singer, actress, and model. Her unique style and androgynous appearance made her a standout figure in the entertainment industry, particularly during the 1970s and 1980s. Jones began her career as a model in New York City and Paris, working with some of the most prestigious fashion houses and designers, including Yves Saint Laurent and Kenzo Takata. Her striking features and bold, unconventional look quickly caught the attention of the fashion world, leading to her becoming a muse for many photographers and artists, including Jean-Paul Goud, with whom she had a long-term collaboration. In the mid-1970s, Grace Jones transitioned from modeling to music, signing a record deal with Island Records. She released her debut album, Portfolio, in 1977, which featured a mix of disco and pop music. Her subsequent albums, Fame, 1978, and Muse, 1979, solidified her status as a disco diva. However, it was her work in the early 1980s that truly cemented her place in music history. Albums like Warm Leatherette, 1980, and Night Clubbing, 1981, showcased a shift towards a more eclectic sound, blending reggae, funk, 
and new wave influences. Hits like Pull Up to the Bumper and Slave to the Rhythm became anthems of the era. Beyond her music career, Grace Jones also made a significant impact in film. She starred in several movies during the 1980s, including notable roles in Conan the Destroyer, 1984, alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger and the James Bond film A View to a Kill, 1985, where she played the formidable villain Mayday. Her performances were characterized by her fierce presence and unique charisma, further enhancing her reputation as a versatile and dynamic entertainer. Grace Jones' influence extends beyond her artistic achievements. She is celebrated for her fearless approach to fashion and her ability to challenge traditional gender norms. Her androgynous style and bold avant-garde fashion choices have made her a fashion icon and a source of inspiration for many contemporary artists and designers.